Let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rukakadash. That's Yahweh, being the true name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, being the true name of our Lord and Savior, and Rukakadash, being the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. Honors to the brothers that's pushing this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so, and honors to the hopeful elect. The one-third of our people that's listening and learning will turn it back to the Lord so that he will have mercy on them in the time of judgment. So we're coming back with another lesson through the power of the Holy Spirit. And again, in this lesson, we're going to get on Esau. And most videos we get on Esau, that's Ezekiel the 35th chapter, said shall face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it and say, I am against you, thus says the Lord, because the Lord is against Esau, Mount Seir, the white people. So that's what we come under. But in this lesson here, we're going to show why the Lord set Esau in the position that he set him in. Because yesterday I did a lesson showing that Satan is one of the top servants of the Most High. And Satan is one of the, one of the most high, most loyal, trustful servants. The most high says Satan in his position to expose the wickedness in people so that the Lord can take action. Well, same with Esau. The Lord set Esau in position to fulfill a particular role. Now, we're going to get what that is. But first, let's read Romans chapter 13. We're going to read 1 through 5. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of Yahweh. The powers that be are ordained of Yahweh. Whosoever therefore resisteth, resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of Yahweh. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise for the same. For he is the minister of Yahweh to thee for good. But let thou do which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of Yahweh, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So this is talking about Esau, the white man. And we're going to pick verse 4, and then we're going to sort of backtrack to get some understanding, to, just to show some proof that this is talking about Esau. But in verse, verse 4, it reads, For he beareth not the sword in vain. So we're going to do a little backtrack to see who in the scriptures bear up the sword. So now we're going to hit Genesis chapter 25. We're going to start at verse 24. Quick little review. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So this is the birth of of the first white man in the Bible. He came out red and hairy all over. And they called his name Esau. And we know that Esau is the white man because continuing down to verse 27, and the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field. So Esau the white man likes to hunt. So we know that Esau is the white man. Let's see Genesis the 27th chapter now. This is when Esau, the white man, was going to be blessed by his father Isaac. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, said unto Esau, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven, from above, and by thy sword shalt thou live. 
and shall serve thy brother. So Esau was blessed with the sword. That's why it says, and by thy sword shall thou live. So going back to Romans 13 and 4, be afraid for he beareth not the sword in vain. Esau is the man in the scriptures that beareth the sword. Esau the white man is the one who was blessed with the sword. And Esau the white man is the minister of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. And the minister means a servant. So he's a servant of the Most High to execute vengeance on them that do evil. Now, <clears throat> let's continue through the scripture some more. So we know that Esau, who came out red and hairy all over, is the white man. He was a hunter. He was blessed with the sword. Now we can get Genesis 36. We're going to hit 8 through 9. Thus dwelt Esau at Mount Seir. Esau is Edom. Edom is plural. Um, it's Edomites for short. That's how we continue. These are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. So Edom is Edomites for short. So when it says Esau is Edom, anything that the scripture says concerning Esau applies to Edom, applies to all of the Edomites, all of the white people. So first word we see, Edom. So Esau or Edom can be used interchangeably. Edom is short for Edomites. So the children of Esau. So Edom, the Edomites, the children of Esau, the white race, safe. We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them, they shall call Edom, the Edomites, the white race, the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. So Edom, Esau, the white race, the scripture calls them the border of wickedness. So the Lord is calling the white race wicked by name. Wicked is not just a broad term. Wicked is talking about a certain group of people, and it would be the Edomites. Esau is Edom. Esau, the father of the Edomites. Then going back, talking about Edom at the top, going down, the Lord has called him in the border of wickedness, and the Lord will have indignation against these people forever. So we now know that Esau is the white man who was a cunning hunter, who was blessed with the sword, and is the people of the wicked. And that's why when we hit Psalms 13 and 17, Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Who's the wicked? Going back to Malachi 1 and 4. Whereas Edom safe, you are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall build and I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. So Esau, Edom, the border of wickedness is the wicked in the Bible. And the wicked, which is thy sword. Who birthed the sword? Whose blessing was the sword? It was Esau. He was blessed with the sword. Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, said unto him, By thy sword shalt thou live. Esau was blessed with the sword. Esau, being the father of the Edomites, and Esau being Edom, all the Edomites bear the sword. They bear Esau's blessing. So the wicked, which is Esau, which is thy sword, which is the sword of the Most High, to execute vengeance, like we read in Romans 13 and 4. Now, we're going to go through this one more time, and we're going to continue this to make sure we got it. Deliver my soul from the wicked. We know that Edom, the Edomites, the white man, 
It's the border of wickedness. And this wicked is thy sword. We know that Esau was blessed with the sword. And that goes for all the Vedom, all the Edomites, the white race in its entirety. His blessing is the sword. That's the only thing they got going for them in the earth. It's not looks. It's not skills. It's not creativity. It's just the sword. That's how they got in power. That's how they still in power today. It's the sword. They weapons. They military. So that's proof that the white man who was blessed with the sword is Esau. So now we can make sense of Romans 13, 1 through 5. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Who are the higher powers today? It's the white man Esau. Who's the higher powers, you know, going back? It was the Romans, the Greeks, the Babylonians, the Egyptians. So let every soul, this is the Lord talking about us, the Israelites. Whoever the Lord sets over us, we need to subject ourselves to them, to these higher powers. Even today, Esau. It don't mean you follow all his mandates and worship him, but subject yourself to the higher power. And why is that? For there is no power but of Yahweh. The powers that be are ordained of Yahweh. So it's not that the white man Esau got power over you. The Lord gave Esau to have power over us. Because again, there is no power but of God. And the powers that be ordained are of God. So Esau being in power, that was set up by the Most High. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of Yahweh. So if you try to resist the white man's authority, you really rebelling against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Or in other words, if you try to rise up against the white man, you know, in the flesh, you actually rising up against the Most High. Because the Most High set Esau, the Edomites, the white man, in power over us for a reason, which is what we're about to get to. But if you rise up against this power that the Most High set in place, you rising up against the will of the Lord. And let's continue. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So if you rise up against the white man on a on a fleshly level, you rising up against the most high. And rising up against the most high, you shall receive to yourselves damnation. So what are some ways that you can rise up against the white man? Let's see. So first one I thought about is Black Wall Street. The Lord set Esau, the white man, the Edomites, he set them up over us so that we could be at the bottom. That's in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The Lord will set all these other nations over us. And us as a people in the Black Wall Street, they wanted to try to get out of this oppression. They wanted to be separate from the white man and, you know, try to pass the white man. They pretty much didn't want the white man ruling over them when you really look at it. And Black Wall Street, you know, was a thriving, all black community, thriving without the white man. The Lord was like, nope, that's not going to happen. Then what happened to Black Wall Street? It got bombed from the sky. The people that was running out of their houses, as their houses were burning, they got shot on sight. So Black Wall Street was bombed and burnt down and shot up that was the lord reminding them who is in power that is the most high who is in power and the most high extended that power to esau the white man for the time being for example another one bill cosby before all these rape accusations he was about to buy a tv station something that no Negro person has done in history. He was about to buy a TV station. So that was Bill Cosby rising above his oppression, rising above the white man. And will pretty much have more power than you know the most white man because he had more money 
the most white man. And then what did the Lord do? He sent Esau after him, bringing all these rape charges on him. So Bill Cosby lost all his, uh, he lost all his benefits and everything that he had going for him. Usually our people, when we rise high above the average white man, the Lord is going to sit you right back down to remind you that the white man is in power for the time being. And he's going to send a white man after you to bring you down. And again, like Black Wall Street, they wanted to uh, not be under the white man and had their own stuff. I mean, good thinking, but them doing that, they was resisting the powers that were set by the Most High. And since they resisted, they received to themselves damnation. They received destruction. Then even our two-thirds today, we have, in the past couple years, we had hundreds and hundreds of rappers being killed because the rappers, they only try to get more money than everybody else to be above the oppression, to be above the white man, you know, thinking too highly of themselves, then what the Lord do? They receive to themselves damnation. The Lord killed these rappers for trying to resist the power, which is really resisting the ordinance of the Most High. So us, as the one-third of the elects, we recognize that the white man Esau is in power. We know that the scriptures say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, meaning although the enemy is flesh and blood, we don't engage of the battle with flesh and blood. We fight the spiritual battle because Esau was blessed with the sword. A sword is used in a physical battle. So you can't rise up against Esau or really fight him. Who we see, they got the police, law enforcement, the military. That's why the scriptures say don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Because if we did try to wrestle against flesh and blood, if we did try to rise up against Esau in the flesh, we would be nuked. To put it simple. So verse 3, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. So the Lord set these different rulers in place to be a terror to those who do evil. So this is saying that if you do good works, you're going to be praised for that same reason. Pretty much saying that if you do good, you got nothing to be afraid of because the Lord set these powers in place to uh, be a terror to those who do evil. And we're going to backtrack in a minute, but let's continue to this. And we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to tell us what this means because people are probably thinking, well, you got a bunch of our people that do good, yet they still getting shot down by the police. They still getting oppressed, still having police brutality. But we're going to answer that in a minute. For he is the minister of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Sidi for good. And some of these polices actually do us favors. You know, when some of these niggas get shot down by the cop or they get through in prison, some of our own people be bad for us anyway. It be other Negroes who be killing us sometimes, breaking in our houses, breaking in our cars, snatching women's purses, snatching up children, doing armed robberies, assault battery, so some of these niggas need to be shot down anyway and through in prison. So that's why it says, for he's a minister of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to thee for good. Because Esau is highly wicked. He does brutalize and mishandle a lot of our people. Hey, but a small portion of those, some of them niggas need to be handled, handled that way. Now let's continue. But if thou... Do which is evil, be afraid. Because like you was just saying, some of, our own, some of our own people be doing armed robberies, assault and battery, breaking and entering, robbing elderly people, robbing little children, kidnapping, murdering. So some of our people be doing a lot of evil. Selling drugs to their people in their own community, destroying the households, destroying the families, destroying the children. 
Now they're growing up without no parents. So a lot of our people do evil. So when they get shot down or they get 20 to life in prison, hey, they, hey the Lord be setting that up so they don't destroy no more of their people. But if thou do which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. So niggas of Israel, the Negroes, the Mexicans, the Native Americans, if you do evil, be afraid. Because this man, he beareth not the sword in vain. That's why Genesis 27, the Lord blessed Esau with the sword. That's why Genesis 25 and 27, it says Esau was a cunning hunter. This man excels in weaponry and hunting. So the Lord set Esau up to punish our people who do wickedly. But if thou do which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of Yahweh. So he's a servant of Yahweh. You got Yahweh Shai. He's the Lord's right hand minister. Then under Yahweh Shai, you got the holy angels. And then you got the prophets. But on the left hand side, you got Satan, who's the minister of the Most High. On the left hand side, then after Satan, you got the demonic spirits that brings out the wickedness in people. Then under these demonic spirits, you got Esau, and Esau will sort of be on the same level as the prophets. So on the left, so at the top, under Yahweh, you got Satan and Shai. They're not evil, but that's the order. And then under Satan and Shai, you got the demons and the holy angels. Then under the demons and the holy angels, you got Esau, who is the wicked, which is thy sword, and then you got the prophets. Satan does the Lord dirty works through the spirit. Yahweh Shai does the, does the Lord's righteous works in the spirit. And the holy angels, they carry out spiritual, spiritual missions without fail. Then the, then the demons, they carry out um, spiritual missions. And then you got the prophets, who does the good works of the Lord in the earth. Then you got Esau, the wicked, which is the sword of the Most High. They do the Lord's dirty works in the earth. For he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that do of evil. Because a lot of our people do evil. So that's why the Lord be sending Esau after him. Rather we know what they did or not, some of these people need to be Actually, a lot of our people need to be put down. But actually, even besides our people who robbing and killing and selling drugs, we as a nation, we did evil to the Most High. So that's why the Lord didn't just send Esau, which is the wicked, which is his sword. He didn't just send them to certain people. He sent them to the whole nation of Israel. And we can get that in Ezekiel chapter 6. We're going to start at verse 3 and say, Ye mountains of Israel, so the Israelites hear the word of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Thus says the Lord Yahweh to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys. Metaphors for the people. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. So the Lord says that He will bring a sword upon our people this sword is a cold word for the white man that's why i believe david prayed deliver my soul from the wicked which is thy sword so yahweh bashem yahweh shai saying that he would bring a sword upon us that sword that he would bring upon us is the wicked because the wicked is thy sword and the wicked goes back to Esau, Malachi 1 and 4. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And then we know Esau, Edom, the Edomites, they was blessed with the sword. So when we see that Lord says, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you. This is talking about the white man. 
He is the wicked and he is the sword. His blessing was the sword. So Esau was put in place to punish us as a nation and our people who doing wickedness today, Esau was put in place to punish them on the spot. Rather it be life in prison or it be being shot down in the streets by the police. And your altar shall be desolate and your images shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols because we committed the capital offense, idol worship, countless times. And then that's why when we go down to Ezekiel 6 and 11, thus says the Lord Yahweh, smite with thine hand and stamp with thy foot and say, alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword. Who's the sword? Whose blessing was the sword? It was Esau Edom. That's why going back to Romans 13 and 4, but if thou do which is evil, if you idol worship, if you killing your own people and selling drugs, be afraid. For he, for Esau, beareth not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of Yahweh. So meaning Esau don't bear the sword just to carry it. And that's why they got the Second Amendment, to the right to bear arms. Esau is the originator of that by being blessed with the sword by the hand of Isaac. So going back to Ezekiel 6 and 11, for they shall fall by the sword, meaning they shall fall by Esau. They shall fall by the white man, by the famine and by the pestilence. So the Lord set Esau up to punish our people for the countless transgressions that we did in the ancient world. That's why we being punished as a nation. Even people who may not have been guilty back then, they still being punished by Esau. But you got the top niggas today that's killing, robbing, thieving, and selling drugs. Hey, they getting the Lord putting them to death on sight. But that's it for this lesson here. We wanted to show the purpose of the white man and his position, why the Lord set him up over us. It was to punish us as a nation and to punish our people today who are doing wickedly to our people still and to show that the Most High is a minister of Yahweh, meaning he's a servant of Yahweh and he bare the sword to use the sword against our people because that's his blessing to execute vengeance and wrath on our people that do evil. All right, until next time.